Hey guys, this is Justin, hello, and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about a Star Wars craft that, to be honest, I've never really liked, but maybe I'll gain an appreciation for by the end of this video. And we're talking specifically the Cloud Car, which of course first appeared in The Empire Strikes Back. So today we'll be taking a look at the craft and also trying to figure out why exactly it looks as it does. So with that said, class, please turn to page 26 of the new essential guide to vehicles and vessels. That reference book explains that the cloud car was in fact not only present on Bespin, but actually a product of Bespin Motors. It was first used by the wing guard, and already I do think there is some rationale for its somewhat odd double pod layout. Because that's really the question, isn't it? Why is it two pods connected instead of a longer fuselage with a set of wings? So, as it was initially launched, although the cloud car was assigned to the Bespin wing, the security forces of Bespin, it also operated in a civilian role, and I don't think that's an accident. My guess is that the specific cloud car we see in The Empire Strikes Back, which is the Storm 4 twin pod cloud car, was perhaps adapted from a prior civilian model or was always made for that purpose. The benefit of having the twin pod is that you can have the pilot in one pod, specifically the port side one, leaving the starboard pod to be a relatively private and interesting experience for any passengers. Imagine this, you're flying through the beautiful vistas of Cloud City and you're just sitting there as a family with your whole pod. Total privacy, total views with just a pilot off to your left side. This setup also allows the engine to be very open, very exposed. It's in the middle of the craft, so it's possible that this helps with cooling or airflow or some some other mechanism of flight. It's worth noting, of course, that the cloud car is not a true spaceship. In fact, it's not a spaceship at all. Rather, it's a repulsor lift vehicle. So it operates in atmosphere, typically using what's known as repulsor lifts, basically anti-gravity technology that everything from small speeders like Luke's in episode four to the Coruscant traffic in episode two used to stay off the ground. So it's also possible that the twin pod format gives the vehicle more maneuverability if the repulsor lifts are each present at, say, the bottom of each pod. Either way, when the cloud car was converted for military or security use, the starboard pod moved from a simple passenger's pod and instead would contain the stations for gunnery, communications, and targeting. I actually have no doubt that both pods probably had redundant systems, so if necessary, the starboard pod, for example, could take over flight duties and a single person in the pilot's pod could do everything if needed especially given the fact that these were sometimes used for civilians. But that's how the double layout was used practically. Again, I think this all stems from the fact that the cloud car was designed as a civilian vessel and that this layout was meant sort of as a taxi or a sightseeing service where the paying guests would be in one pod separated from the pilot. There's actually some evidence for that as well. Specifically, if we look again at the new essential guide to vehicles and vessels, that book states that the popularity of the Bespin cloud car spawned a number of copycats and variants with one well-known combat variant being the Talon 1 cloud car. If you look at this vessel, you'll see that it eschews the double pod design for one singular pod and a more traditional fighting craft design. As a note, it actually does remind me a lot of, say, a prey bird, for example. Besides for, of course, the divergent design, the cloud car combat form is pretty similar to the Bespin model. In terms of firepower, for example, instead of having cannons on each pod, it's got a double forward facing blaster. I do wonder whether these are scaled down compared to starfighter grade weaponry, like the cloud cars specifically are. Perhaps Perhaps not, where this one does have a stated combat purpose. Of course, there were many other cloud car variants throughout the galaxy, but you also have to ask yourself, what makes this a cloud car specifically versus just an ordinary speeder? The V-Wing, for example, was an atmospheric combat craft, but we obviously wouldn't call that a cloud car. I think generally that something like the combat model is almost different enough that it should be under a different classification and that a true cloud car should probably be a mix of civilian and military vessel 
something that's often used for security, but could maybe take civilians around if needed. For those of you wondering, what's the purpose of these repulsor lift or non-spacecraft vehicles anyway? That's a good question. A lot of the times the rationale will be that they're a lot cheaper to produce and maintain. Something like a snow speeder would have been a lot cheaper for the Alliance to find and maintain than X-Wings. But they also are completely ineffective in certain situations. Something like the V-Wing, for example, which was an atmospheric craft, needed a special lander, despite what the Rogue Squadron video game would show you, to fight on the surface of a planet if it were going to be dropped off from space. And these actually appear in the Dark Empire comic. Maybe specialized repulsor lift vehicles have better performance in atmosphere, which would be a good rationale for why the Bespin Wingard, for example, would choose them. Also, the last thing I have to mention is it's very possible the cloud car was designed that way simply for looks. That was certainly the case out of universe. There's an entire featurette about the cloud car, which was contained in, I believe, the first special edition DVD set for the original trilogy. I've been using some footage of it throughout this video. I'm going to link to it down below. It's really worth a watch and only about a minute long, but basically they describe that the cloud car was meant to convey a sense of whimsy, it was meant to be a rounded vehicle contrasting the straight lines we usually see and which are associated with Imperial vessels. It's very possible that Cloud City simply wanted to take this Art Deco look and bring it to a vehicle. But guys, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this video look at one of the strangest but very Ralph McQuarrie-esque vehicles of Star Wars. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.